Are you a Christian and resting off what God has done through you and in you in the past? But you can't point to anything that God is doing in you and through you now. That is what we're talking about in this episode of Sermon Shorts. Pastor Ray, your Sunday sermon was titled, Hang In There. You used the scripture about abiding in the Spirit. And we were talking just before we began discussing here right now about something you said Sunday about living off old fruit. What did you mean by that? And as a matter of fact, let's listen to a clip right now from Sunday's sermon about living off old fruit. You see, just because you have produced fruit in the past is no guarantee that you will continue to produce fruit in your life. It's no guarantee that you will sustain the fruit. In fact, if the only, listen, if the only fruit that you can point to is the fruit of the past in your life, you can look back and say, oh, I remember when God, oh, I remember, oh, it was good God, I remember. If the only fruit that you can point to is fruit in the past, which, and by the way, it's okay to remember. It's just not okay to live there. And if the only fruit you, can, you can, can point to is fruit of the past, something's not right. That means, listen, if all the fruit you can see in your life is back there, it means you're not abiding right here. Pastor, I'm wondering, as you were preparing for the sermon, why you felt it was important to discuss that particular portion with us. Yeah. Well, it is because um, our past is good I'm, in most cases. So, I mean, the redeemed past. Uh, and how God has worked through us. And that's what I was talking about. But the fact is, too many Christians try to live off of something or some experience of the past. And in this context, the something God had done in their life or some transforming uh, process in their Christian growth uh, or some way God has used them in the life of someone else or to make a difference. And if we're not careful, and I believe the enemy would like us to set our camp up back there and say, you know what, you have produced fruit. And it was good fruit. And it was fruit that honored God. You you produced that back there instead of us focusing on the right here and now. But what is God doing in my life right now? And in the passage that we looked at there, uh, I, I... talked about the Greek, and I said that word abide in most cases is used in what we call the aorist constative, Mm -hmm. which means it's an urgent command. Aorist means it's uh, an action that happens, just it happens, but that it has long-lasting effect. And that's what Jesus, this is an urgent command to bear fruit and to bear much fruit. And so it's something that we're commanded to do, but it has long-lasting effect. Hence, if all you've got is fruit in the past, there's no long-lasting fruit or impact of God's work inside of you. So it should cause us great concern to say, why is there no current fruit in my life? So it ought to lead to some introspection and evaluation spiritually. So while we're told, obviously, to rest in the Spirit and that there is benefit from resting in the Spirit, there's still action on our part that produces fruit it seems like we get stuck sometimes on that past fruit. So how do we move forward? Yeah, and that's good, Lance. Uh, we, because abiding, I even mentioned, is a kind of effortless resting in Christ. That's the idea there, to remain in Him. But remaining in Him doesn't mean spiritual laziness. And we better not confuse those two. But when I'm abiding in Him, I am resting in Him. I am dependent on Him. As we talked about in the message... His power is operating through me, then the natural result is going to be uh, movement. Let's use that word. Uh, There's going to be activity. I said in the message, we're not talking about salvation by works, but we're talking about a salvation that works, that is manifest through the internal work of the Spirit of God in our life, the Holy Spirit producing those internal fruits we talked about, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control, uh, Paul talks about in Galatians 5, and 23, 
uh, that then overflow, because that's transforming us inside, overflow into outward fruit. And that is the fruit of righteousness that's displayed in behavior and attitudes, uh, in our influence of other people and th that sort of thing. So what, what we have to do is we have to look inside. You say, how do we go forward? from there if we're if it's all fruit of the past what we've got to do is say that was I know God was working in my life there why isn't he working in my life here and and that should lead us to some internal evaluation Lord why is there no real fruit activity right now and if there isn't it should concern us so how do we go forward we come back to the place where we say I'm not abiding in you I'm just going through the motions, or I'm trusting in myself to produce fruit. And the fact is, Lance, you or I, we can't produce it on our own. We can do some good things, but we can't effortlessly rest in him and allow his spirit then to uh, uh, do its work in and through us. So we ought to look for the first thing we got to do. We got to look inside and say, am I really dependent on him? Or is that just merely a confession? Am I just saying the right thing because I know it's the right thing? Or have I utterly surrendered to him so that he can be the power in me instead of me trying to be the power for him, if that makes sense? It does. It's good stuff. You can watch the entire sermon on our website, rbcdothan.org, or social media, Ridgecrest Baptist Church, YouTube, and Facebook. Pastor, thank you. Thanks. So in light of that, how can we make sure that we have new fruit in our lives? I think the first thing that we need to do is to do a fruit inventory. Let's look at the last two weeks of our life. Can we point to anything and say, yes, I see there God working in me to do something? If we can't, we obviously need to do something, and that takes action on our part. It doesn't have to be anything huge. Send an email, an encouraging email to someone. Be purposeful in your speech at work or in your family, just something that you can say that God is urging me to make a difference in somebody else's life. It doesn't have to move the earth, but certainly that will help jumpstart new fruit in your life. I hope it does.